Hi, my name is Damon Lemby and I'm the CEO of Learn It. I hope you enjoy your class. And if you do, please like and subscribe to my channel because we have plenty of more content coming. Have a good day. Hello and welcome to Applied Business Writing. Our goal in this session is to help you write more clear and concisely with your audience in mind. I was looking forward to this course because what's going to happen is we'll help you get through writer's block and how to filter through your own thoughts to make sure you're giving the most important takeaways and have something that's professional as possible. That's the goal of this session. So before jumping into it, let's look at some numbers. Here's one, 400 trillion billion. So the idea is this is how much is lost or wasted in the cost of a lack of productivity due to poor writing. So if I say it slower, the idea that everyone's filtering, trying to understand and decipher their emails, this is the global cost of this problem. Next, each individual in the workforce, on average, is getting 200 emails a day. Oh my gosh. And then finally, you're writing and communicating yourself, I, I, on average, 2.5 hours a day. This is an overwhelming number. So it behooves us to make sure we really clean this up so we have our audience in mind, it's really clear and concise, and our, and our messages are landing in a very professional manner. So what are we gonna to explore today? First thing is this, how to get past writer's block. You gotta respond, gotta make it sound good, and sometimes you just get stuck. So how do you get past that? Second, what are some frameworks for daily communication so you can make sure your message is clear and concise and have the most impact on your reader. Third, how do you write to persuade or influence someone? What are some techniques you can do here? And finally, you want to report clearly and effectively. So by the end of this session, you'll go through all of these four points. Okay, so get your notebooks ready, get your pens out, and here we go. So before we get into this, let's spend some time figuring out why we should. It's a very popular phrase, start with why. And the idea is if we're really going to lean into business writing and getting good at it, we should figure out why it's important to us, what we're going to gain by doing this. What are the benefits of good business writing? Specifically, it's going to boost efficiency and productivity for yourself and for your reader. If you got this down tight, they can act quickly on what you're saying or doing. It improves your ability to manage effectively. So if someone needs to be communicated and directed or coached even, your message can land a lot cleaner if you get good at this area. Also, it helps your brand re re reputation, sorry. So when people see your name in their inbox, they don't mind opening it. They have a good sensation when they see your name and see your writing. Also, it drives more sales. For a lot of you watching this, the bottom line is, can I get more business and clean, good writing that's clear and concise and has an impact on the audience with them in mind? Really does drive that. So it behooves you to follow through here and focus on what you're going to gain by spending time in this class with me today. Now, there's some science of business writing. What's really fascinating is good writing increases the flow of dopamine to the brain's pleasure center. And you go, really? Yeah. <clears throat> so if I sit down and I have my phone and I open up this email, let's say, and when I see this, it's easy for me to read and I get, it's really clear to see what I'm supposed to do next and what it means to me. It's a relief. It feels good. And that feeling good triggers that dopamine to go, hey, this feels good. Read it again or read from them again. So we're creating a really strong conditioning in this person if we write really well. Does that make sense? So they'll have a sense of joy and relief and positive expectation when they see you coming. So people might say, okay, well, that's fascinating. But what about this chat GPT thing and AI? Can't I just use chat GPT to get better at this rather than spending time doing this now? Reasonable question, especially with the amount of information we're seeing on this in the media right now. So have a look at this. <clears throat> so here, here's an answer for you. So chat GPT is a language model that can generate human-like text in a conversational context, but it is not capable of creating original content or making editorial decisions like human writers and editors can. While chat GPT can be a useful tool, it is limited to generating text based on patterns learned from its training data and cannot replicate the creativity and skill of human writers and editors. There's an answer for you. Now, as you hear me say that and read that over yourself, what do you think of that answer? So how does it sound to you? What's the impact? Is it releasing your dopamine in you? Now, the reason I'm asking you is because that was actually written by ChatGPT. 
And some of you go, yeah, I thought so. All right, so part of this is a bit clunky, a little repetitive even, grammatically correct, punctuation is correct, sure, but there is that clunky, repetitive, not really singing to me kind of sensation. Do you feel that? And so what we're saying here is that creativity, that that music, that artistry, we're looking at from you in applied business writing. So how do we do it? First thing is we got to get off the starting block. So how do we overcome that? How do we overcome writer's block? Well, we're going to give you three quick scenarios before we jump into how to apply yourself with business writing. And the three scenarios are one, mind mapping, free writing, and cubing. So some of you probably heard of this process, the mind map. So what you do is you train your brain to think clearly and then write. So what happens is you write your topic in the middle. So maybe it's a Word document or a spreadsheet or a piece of paper, but the the idea is in the center of the page. Then you surround that idea with several topics that are subtopics that can kind of spin off of that first topic. And then finally, surround your subtopics with subtopics of their own. (laughs) Okay. You're going, what? Don't worry, I'm going to show you a graphic in a second. So here's how it goes. You start with a clear, succinct purpose for your communication. Enhance marketing, increase sales, better presentation skills, whatever your central idea is. Once you've got that clear, succinct idea, then you say, okay, what are some phrases or colors or images to spark my creativity? And then identify the most important items to write about. Let's break this down. So if you're making a mind map, you could use pen and paper, which is what I classically do myself, or you might use a whiteboard, or you might use software programs, which I've also used quite well. So FreeMind, MindMeister, XMind, and Coggle are some really good examples of these. So either way, it's your choice, whatever's most comfortable for you. So to start this off, you have this idea in the middle, the product launch proposal, let's say. And as you're sitting here, you start thinking, what are all the ideas that come to mind? And you have your subtopics, right? So it could be product details, it could be marketing, it could be stakeholders, it could be date and time. I notice the colors are changing a little bit. So when you go to stakeholders, hmm, when I think of stakeholders, what comes to mind for me? You know what? I think of the C-suite and third-party vendors and clients. Oh, you know, for product details, I think of cost of goods and materials, environmental friendly. So your mind is just like allowed to just let it run. You're not confining yourself to the text just yet. You're getting the ideas out first. You follow Once you've got the ideas out, then you might say, okay, which of these areas do I want to focus on? Oh, you know what? I want to get into environmental friendly products because you've just created this beautiful idea from this free mind map. Make sense? The next one here is this. It's just free writing. And what this says is you just let your mind go free. Free writing is writing that follows thoughts of the mind or stream of consciousness and involves no structure. It can help improve creativity, help reduce anxiety. You just write. So this funny slide showing to you, don't get confined. So many folks censor themselves before they actually start to create. What we're suggesting to you is in free writing, you're thinking about, I'm going to give an example. I'm thinking about dieting. Then I think about diet. I think about the beach and then swimsuits and then going to the gym and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I'm just writing it all down on a piece of paper with no particular place. I'm just letting it flow. And as you do that, you'll say, oh, you'll arrive on a central idea that you want to capture. Does that make sense? So in free writing, just just write. Just get the paper out. Don't censor yourself. Don't judge. Just let it flow. That's free writing. Now, with cubing, it's a bit different. So if you use an example of cubing, the, the central point of this or central theme of this is you're going six sides of a cube. So you pick an idea you want to talk about or write about. In this case, it might be emails. And you look at that topic from six different angles. Make sense? So you might say, okay, if I'm doing emails, one side of the cube could be describe it. I'm going to describe emails. Well, the emails are a commonplace communication tool. Okay. Another side of the cube could be compare it. Okay. So I'm going to compare emails to, okay, emails are typically quicker than meetings. Okay. So another side of the cube. And we say, okay, associate it. What can I associate emails to? I can associate emails to um, burnout. There's 200 I'm reading a day. (laughs) So there you go. So burnout, associate. Um, Another side of the cube could be analyze. Emails can create work-life imbalances. Because what happens is I'm in my car reading emails. I'm at my TV reading emails. I'm at dinner reading emails. In my office reading emails. In the shower reading emails. I'm everywhere reading emails. So it just creates this crazy imbalance. Okay, analyzing it. Got it. You get two more sides left, right? So on the next slide, we could say, okay, how do I apply this? How would I apply emails? Um, well, if used correctly, it can be a time saver. 
Okay, and then finally, um, argue for and against it. So email saving time for having too many meetings and at Aaron's fastest chat. <clears throat> so all you would do here is take these six sides of the cube with your topic and go through the same thing. Describe it, compare it, associate it, analyze, apply, and then finally argue for and against. And that would give you some ideas on how to get out of that writer's block. With me so far? Okay, great. So now it's your turn. Here's what I want you to do. Using any one of these three areas, mind mapping, free writing, or cubing, choose a technique that works for you, that, that resonates with you, honestly. Then apply the technique to one of the following scenarios or one of your choice. Either one you want to write on or one of these two. So here's one for you. One could be, think about something complex that you need to communicate soon. And then practice using one of those methods. So it's like, okay, I got to talk about budgets or expense reports or whatever comes to mind for you, I'm going to use free writing. Boom. Okay, great. Or you could say, hey, you have been tasked with writing a grant proposal requesting funding for new research project. Okay. Practice using one of these techniques. So you've been got to write this grant. Okay. Oh, maybe now I'll use a mind map. Okay. Whatever makes sense to you. Or if these don't stick out for you, choose one of your own choosing. So I'm encouraging you to do right now, in a second when I say go, is pause me, okay? So pause me, take your time, pull out a Word document, a whiteboard, a piece of paper, and actually do this. Really try and let your mind go free and get through the writer's block as a practice, okay? So take five minutes, pause me now, and I will be here when you get back. Pause me now. Okay, so you did it, right? So what you did, you applied your scenario, you tried one of these techniques, and so now we're out of the writer's block. And now what is time is once we've got our idea, we've got a sort of like a good vision of it, what we want to go with, now it's time to start applying some of these business writing techniques. Okay, so get a fresh piece of paper, a fresh document, and here we go. Now it's time to look at everything you could say. So I like this graphic because you're seeing you are so intelligent. You've got so much info you can give away and share. The tricky part is you want to focus on only what you should say. Remember at the start of the session, I alluded to the idea that there's all this waste around emails going out there and how much it's bogging down the system. So if you're dumping all that you know into your emails, what can happen is people get bogged down. They're overwhelmed. So our focus here is how do we get to a place where we're only saying what we should say. How do we, in other words, how do we filter our thoughts? So what happens is you've got this great volume, this great, beautiful brain you've got, and you've got these stats and ideas and stories in there. And so as you're filtering through those stories and you're communicating with someone, you want to arrive at this place of only what you should say. <clears throat> so we're going to show you how to really filter that down, first of all. So then once you've got it filtered down, and you know what you only what you should say, now you're going to, okay, what's the best framework? What's my intention? What am I trying to get across here? And there are three areas we're going to focus on in this training. And the one is this, your daily communication. So you've got this email, you're about to send out an email, you're about to communicate with someone in some fashion, and it might just be a simple daily communication, which has got to be fast and sound. Or they're just going to scan it. And they you might use a bluff and then why technique, which I'll explain in a second. So the idea is this is a daily consistent communication. Then it's like you've got this other area where it's like you've got everything you can say, but in this case, the intention is, can I influence or persuade this person? And so there's TMI and time, money, and impact. And so this person who's reading it, if you want to influence them, they're most likely influenced by one of those three areas, right? Probably time, probably money, or probably it's the impact of what you're going to do. So, and the next thing here is if you really want to influence someone is situation, problem, solution. So they're reading your email, reading your co your correspondence to say, give me the, what's going on. Help me digest it faster. And you do it with those three areas. The next thing is this, is like, again, you got everything you could say, we're trying to find the best way to do it. And perhaps now you're trying to give a progress report. So to give a progress report, there are three P's of progress reporting we'll go through. And also you'll write reviews that engage and motivate, okay? So there's three general styles or frameworks we're gonna go through to help you get across only what you should say. So first, let's dive into this filter your thoughts. So you're about to get this going, you've got through the writer's block, you got your ideas here, all of these things, ideas and stats. So the goal of filtering your thoughts is, can you stay on target? So you're including content that supports your takeaway. So there's an end game, an end goal you're after, 
and filtering helps you stay on that target. Also, it keeps your audience engaged by connecting what you have to say to what they care about. So when you're filtering it, you're giving them a key takeaway and you're really relating it to what's most important to them. That's the goal of filtering your thoughts. So here it is again, everything you say, everything you could say, sorry, coming in, stats, ideas, all these stories, then you got it down to, okay, I only want to say these things because it's based on daily communication or possibly it's going to be an influence or a progress report. And my end game here is by doing that process, doing that filtering, I want this person to have a takeaway. I want them to walk away with something, an action or a quest, change in behavior of some kind. That's the goal of filtering. Got it? Okay, now, <clears throat> so then question becomes, how do you then clarify this takeaway? So what do you want your reader to take away from your message? So they're receiving this from you, this writing from you. And so one might be, I want them to have a takeaway message. So this example says, you actually say it in your email. The takeaway message is, and then bang. And so they clearly see the message or you simply say like, hey, what I want you to remember from this email is, and now comes the message. Follow? So you very clearly, explicitly show here is the message. Another takeaway could be the action. So you're asking them to do something now. So you say, the action I want you to take after this email is, so again, you very explicitly clarify the takeaway. That helps get rid of that confusion reading your writing, true? Also, what I need you to do is, wham, and you give them that. Or if I, I like you to, but the point I'm trying to make here is, and I just did it just now, the point I'm trying to make is, the takeaway action is clarify that takeaway. Did you see that? Now, take away the benefit. So one area is I want you to have a takeaway message. One area is I want you to have a takeaway action. And one more could be the takeaway benefit. So when you do X, you'll then be able to do Y. What it's going to mean to you, what you're going to receive. The so what. Here's what you're going to gain. Once you've completed that action I stated above, that will allow you to move to the next phase. Why? Hear that? So what's the payoff? What's the benefit? What's the gain for them? And you want to explicitly share that in your writing. That's how you filter your thoughts down. You follow me? Okay, great. Now, once we've got that filtering done, now it goes on to, okay, I know what I want to give them a takeaway, either a message or an action or a benefit. So now it becomes, okay, so what's my framework for daily communication? We'll start here first. So if I'm doing daily communication, I'm either going to write fast and sound or write emails for those who scan. So some folks you talk to or write to, they're not wanting to see a whole list of things. They want the point fast. And that's what write emails to scan means. So first we're going to dive into write fast and sound professional emails. How do you do this? Well, it's a five-step process. <clears throat> so a five-step process for writing formal emails. Okay. Here's what you do. The greeting. And you want to use a very well-received greeting, which is like, hi, good morning, good afternoon, hello. Avoid the haze and just the name type stuff. So hi, good morning. These are the most tested possible, most tested and well-received greetings. Okay. Then what's the purpose of this thing? So they're reading your email in sequence. They see, hi, John, the purpose, which is I'm writing because you telegraph it or clarify it. I want to reach out to you to ask, bam, I'm following up on, boom, to so make it very clear why we're here, the purpose of this. Next, the message. So what goes into this message? Well, you're going to include a bunch of things. So the who is impacted, the what's going on, when it's happening, where it's happening, why it's happening, and how it's happening. To the best of your ability, you're going to answer those questions in the message. So the recipient says, okay, hi. They know the purpose, why they're here, and they know what's going on in a very clear context that clear conciseness we're looking for in your business writing, right? And then finally, the takeaway, the action, the message, or the benefit. So make sure they know, okay, and potentially possibly include something personal. And then finally, closing one of these great things being kind regards, sincerely, and best wishes or best regards, okay? That's a simple flow. Let me give you an example so you can see how it works, okay? So here we go. Here's an example. You can see the headline says example, right? Writing fast, sound, professional emails. So I'll read it to you. I know some folks are like, oh man, I got read it to me. So this, I'll read it to you because I can't be with you in person. So here it goes. Hi, Jim. There's that hi, very nice greeting. I'm writing to ask, here comes our purpose, 
right? I'm writing to ask the status of your progress on the email marketing campaign strategy. Check. Nice greeting, nice purpose. True? Next, we say, we're going to what now? The message. The message says, I have recently been asked with coding our own email templates for the campaign. What's going on? Okay. Part of this task will include determining which coding platform will be most effective and visually appealing to our audience. It would be helpful to hear an update on your progress of the campaign specifically regarding estimated costs, detail about our target audience, and our sign-up sources. I will not need to create an initial template until the end of the month, but want to reach out now to get a better understanding of this project. So we're hearing the characters here, right? Who's involved, when's involved, what's involved, why it's happening, how it's happening. We're hearing all those components in there. Now what happens next? Takeaway, right? So the takeaway is, can you please send me details of, oh, this is an action takeaway. Can you send me details of the estimated cost, target audience, and sign-up sources by end of day Friday? You are also welcome to send any additional information that may, may be helpful too. Hope you're having a nice week as that personal piece. And then sincerely, Sarah. Very simplistic way to get and do it fast with five steps. So now it's your turn. Think about an email that you need to send in the next day. Okay. Use the fast and sound framework to draft your message, but be sure to include your takeaway at the end. Okay. So here it is. You're going to put the greeting in there the purpose, the message, the who, what, why, when, and when, and then the wrap up with something personal. And the takeaway could be either a message, could be an action or a benefit. And also don't forget to close with best regards sincerely. Make sense? Okay, great. So take some time now, much as you need, just pause me and I'll be here when you get back and looking forward to finding out how it went. Kind of. <laughs> okay, see you soon. Okay, great. Well done. So at this point now, what you have is you've done your first sort of attempt at the right fast and sound for daily communication. When we come back here, what's going to happen next is we're going to look at how do you do that daily communication using the bluff and why method. So get a new piece of paper, a new document, and here we go on to the next section. In this segment of daily communication, we're looking at those who write emails for those who scan. So you're writing an email, someone's just going to quickly go through it. And this technique is called bluff and then why. So you're going to bluff them. No, you're not going to bluff them. <laughs> what you're going to do is share the bottom line up front. So if someone's just simply scanning it, they want to get the most relevant critical details as fast as possible, give it to them right away. Okay, here's the bottom line and then share why. So saying it slower, you'd say, hey, listen, if you walk away with, from this message with one thing, I want it to be, bam, and you give it to them, bottom line right away. And then why? And here's why. Here's the context. Here's the details. Just those two things. And this is for those who are just scanning it. It's not for those previous emails I covered earlier. It's on for this, this version. Okay. So here's how it might look. Now, when I go through this, understand you don't have to put in these bolded titles. This is purely for an example. And I won't read out the entire piece, but what I will share with you is the, the different sections so you can see how it works. So if someone's just scanning it and they come to this email, it says, hello team. So a good, strong greeting. We like that. Then we notice here it says, what's happening, right? What is that? That's the bottom line. What's happening? We are implementing a new architectural design beginning July 1st, okay? And then also add a little more what's happening on how it will work. Bam, bam, bam. So if someone's just scanning this right away, I know what's happening and how it's going to work. When you go down further, it does say why. So why are we doing it this way? We've heard feedback and concerns, about limitations of the current software. Boom, that's why we're doing it this way. Got that? So if someone's just scanning it, maybe it's a senior leader in your business, it's not that they're trying to be disrespectful or rude necessarily, it's that they're, they are reading so many emails and making so many decisions, they need to have this information right away as fast as possible, as clear as possible. They may not have time to come back to you again and do, what do you mean? Can you interpret this? And what's going on? Why is this happening? You gotta get to them quick. So you give them the bottom line, bottom line first and then explain to them why that is. What's the context? Follow that? So here's what's going to happen. You're going to try this one out for yourself now. Go back through your sent emails. So go into your open your outbox. Look at this and identify an email to rewrite using this bluff method. 
So redraft using the bottom line upfront technique. Now it says discuss your experience because typically it's done with a group setting. We're not gonna group today, just by yourself. I want you to reflect on this. So reflect on this by yourself. What's the difference between your before and after emails? Okay, so the before email went out and it was fine because you, you sent it, it was fine. And so now if you take that same email and revise it where you're saying, here's the bottom line, here's why it's happening, and you condense it or shorten it for someone who's scanning it, what do you see are the differences? What, what can you tell? Make sense? Okay, so here it is. Pause me now, please, and take a good chunk of time here. I'm gonna recommend at least five minutes, ideally more, to go through and find that email and rewrite it using this bluff technique. And I'll be here when you get back. Pause me now. Okay, great. So what you've got now, <clears throat> excuse me, what you've got now is a revised version of that previous email. And for a lot of folks who've done this, per, this class live, what they see is like, wow, the brevity is pretty powerful. Meaning how much condensed and quicker and still maintaining the conciseness and the clarity, even though using less words and getting to the context a lot faster. So if you notice that yourself, you're in the right direction. Okay, so you're, we're, all you're doing here is what's the point up front, bottom line up front, and then why it's happening. Give me that context. Okay, so stay tuned. We're on to our next section of our framework. So our second framework we want to explore, or second intention we want to explore, is writing to persuade and influence. So you filtered your thoughts of what you want to say, you've created a takeaway, you've determined the intention you have is to write and persuade. So there are two ways to do this. One is with time, money, and impact, and the second was SPS, or situation problem solution. So I'll go through both and you can determine what you want to use if you want to write to persuade and influence. Now as you do this, notice you have to focus on what's in it for them, not you. Okay, so what's in it for me? So the recipient sits here on their side and as they receive your writing, they're saying, hey, what, what do I get for this? What's in it for me? Got that? So what you want to sit down and do is say, okay, why you think they should care? So you sit down and you reflect, you capture ideas. Why do you think they're going to care about this message? Then you say to yourself, okay, um, <clears throat> you give all their reasons and their potential with them or what's in it for me based on your perception. You got that? So you're just sitting down, please think, what do I think? What do I think it is? And then what they actually care about. So you got to sit back and maybe go through emails, go through LinkedIn pages, talk to friends, family, colleagues, whoever it could be, to give you insight as to what is the actual evidence you have that they care about this thing. Maybe they said it to you directly. I don't know. The idea here is dis just disregard what you want to talk about here. Okay, so it's not from your perspective now. It's like purely what did they want? What are they saying? And what keeps them up at night? You really got to get inside their shoes. Now, as you create these two pieces of data, what you want to do is bring them together. And in the middle here is one good reason why you should share or the overlap of what you think they care about and what they actually care about. And this is the place you want to target. And you can see in our slide here, it says one good reason is better than 17 uninspiring. What that means is most folks, when they write, they write from their own perspective what matters to them, not from the perspective of the person they're writing to. So you want to get in the habit of really surrendering your position for a little bit and offering more to theirs, and that will really resonate that much stronger. It'll be more clear and more concise, and you'll see a much better return in your response rates when people when you do this. Does that make sense? So now the idea becomes, okay, so what is in it for them? What could be some ideas of what they do care about or what does keep them up at night? Well, this is where we bring in TMI. Now, TMI is pretty high probability they're going to be impacted or influenced by one of these three areas. So for sure, their time. <clears throat> Everyone values their time. So you want to make sure I'm touching this area because they're probably don't have enough time. They're too busy, whatever it might be. Also, the money. Well, how much does it cost? Was it going to hurt my department, my revenue for the year, my business, and whatever it might be? And finally, what's the impact of this message? How's it going to hurt or help me? You follow? So in your communication, if you're trying to influence and persuade, you say, okay, listen, when we encounter the challenge, time, here's when it happened, or we had some breakthroughs, time, how long is going to take us to do these things? These are all time-based ideas. So this person on the other side receiving this says, yeah, I care about this because I care about my time. 
You follow? Next, money. Maybe they don't aren't so concerned with time. Maybe they're more concerned with money in this case. So now we've expended this percent on the budget. How's it affecting our revenue, our budgeting, our year plan, whatever it might be? We're looking to be short. Oh, this amount. Uh oh. So how do we forecast now? We can source materials at blank cost. So this idea, if they're making decisions, trying to lead a team, trying to make whatever they want to do. This can be an also way to get to what's in it for them. And then finally, the impact of your message. Things are working well, or things are challenging right now, or the product is moving along as expected. We can see what the actual driver is, or what's going on with this particular project. Now, why am I telling you this? <clears throat> Any one of these is likely to hit someone's whiff them. All three of them combined can be very powerful to persuade and influence someone. Make sense? Now, that's one area. If this isn't really resonating for you, you could also move on to this other section, which is situation. So when you write to persuade and influence, you go situation, you'd say, listen, social media has significantly changed people, the way people communicate in the last 20 years. That's the situation. Something they can agree with. You know, yep, definitely has changed the way we communicate. Okay, got it. Then as you say the situation, you tell them, here's the problem. Or here are the challenges that are going on. So you might say, okay, while social media platforms provide a great opportunity, social media has affected the productivity of many employees. Employees are consuming content unrelated to their jobs throughout the workday, leading to reduced employee engagement. So we have the agreement situation, and then we have the problem with that situ situation. So now we share the solution. Keep it short if you can. And so the solution says, okay, to deal with these concerns, our best option is to develop and implement a policy that promotes social learning and knowledge sharing while preventing inappropriate use. So the goal here is to go situation, problem, solution, so the reader can really see what's going on. It really follows a very nice storytelling aspect of beginning, middle, and end. And we're hardwired to follow that. We're hardwired to find the solution. What's the point to us? And there's some psychology of this approach. So the psychology goes even deeper where it says, listen, if you share the situation, what's happening is as a reader, I'm, I'm immediately agreeing with you. So you share a part that I agree with and they go, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happens is if I were to disagree, I might not trust what you know and what you're talking about. And I might start quietly building a case against you. So we really want to focus on, can I find a situation they agree with so they're in alignment with me? So then when I move on to the problem section, I have some context here. Okay. So the problem says, listen, as a reader, I feel some kind of pain. So I've got my agreement. I'm in context with you. Okay. And then now here comes this pain feeling, which is what you want because people are motivated by their emotions. And they'll do more to avoid pain than to gain pleasure. Documented very heavily in psychology textbooks. So as you share this downside, this hurt, what they're losing on, they go, ooh, I want to get into action now. And so I have more context for the solution you're about to propose, right? So I feel this pain. Okay, this is why it's important. We got to get rid of this pain. And so now you go on to the solution. You say, listen, you feel, you feel confident enough in the quality of the analysis so far to hear you out. Make sense? So what we're saying is you share a situation so that they agree with you and they have context. Then share a problem. So they go, oof, they feel that pain. So they want to avoid that pain. And they're more open now to receiving your solution. And they feel confident because they've been able to really clearly follow your rhythm, that beginning, middle, and end. This is how you write to influence and persuade. You ready? Okay, so now it's your turn. <clears throat> so what you're gonna do, using the SPS model, situation, problem, solution, write a persuasive email explaining why you're proposing a change in design and a budget of a project to a new client or to a scenario of your choice if it's easier, okay? So you're gonna use situation, problem, solution. If you want, you could also overlay it with time, money, and impact. Time, situation, the pain and the money, and here's the impact of the solution. You could probably overlay these if you wanted to. But what I really want you to focus on is that situation, problem, solution. And be sure to filter your thoughts through the WIFM, what's most important to them. Don't lose sight of that as you go. It will really help you to get that agreement. 
Okay, so pause me now. Take your time here. Writing is getting it right is more important than getting it done. So pause me and I'll see you when you get back. Okay, so continuing on our journey here, here's the final framework for writing clearly and effectively. It's reporting clearly and effectively. And our goal is you filtered your thoughts and you come up with a takeaway and you determine, you know what, in this case, what I want to share is a nice clean assessment, a nice clear report of what's going on to show my accomplishments. In order to show a real clear and concise version of your accomplishments, you got to do three Ps of progress reporting. Or you want to write a review that actually engages and motivates someone. So how do you do this? It was just more about reporting in this version. So the purpose of this, so what, what's the intention or the goal behind this? The intention is we want to increase visibility. How are we doing? How is it going? Do you want to continue? Want to keep it going? So reporting allows you to tell the story of your progress and share facts of your success and your accomplishments. So someone can see, hey, how's that project going? How's the sales going? How's that initiative going? How's the training going? Whatever it might be, we can clearly and concisely get across the success and accomplishment. So there are three P's of progress reporting. So the framework of reporting clearly and effectively is this. One, the progress. What progress has been made since the last update to explicitly share? Here's what's going on since last time I saw you. Second, the plans. Share what's in line next. Or I did X and this is what next Y. Okay, so hold on. You go, wait a second, Cal. Go back for a second. So the progress. What's been made? Here's where we are today. Here's what's coming up next. So you boom, boom. Say those two things. Person goes, got it. Third thing is the problems. What might get in the way? So here's what's been done so far. Here's what's going next. Here's what might slow us down. Here's what support is needed. Here's what I say. Here's, we're gonna, here's how we're going to handle those things. So on the recipient end, I can say, okay, how's this project going? Or how's this plan going? And you go, hey, listen, here's what happened last time I saw you. Here's what's going on next. Here's what's going to get in the way. Here's how we're going to handle it. The person goes, ah, got it. Okay, so super clear and concise. That's the goal. Really, really visible. You follow? Now, reporting clearly and effectively the three P's of progress reporting, and you want to write reviews that engage and motivate. So, if you're writing reviews that engage and motivate <clears throat> in a way that reduces the feelings of anxiety or fear, what you want to do is keep it positive. So, we don't want to hear this big droning negative pity party. Keep it positive, keep it optimistic, you know, make sure your language is on point. Be specific. Don't get away from vague generalities and be comprehensive. Okay. So you want to keep these guidelines in mind as you're doing your review. So here are the do's and don'ts of writing reviews. So here first, don't do this. Don't write, I have good communication skills. That's pretty vague, is it not? Or Jessica's sales numbers last quarter were very good. Oh, I can't, can't really interpret that based compared to what? And again, Ron is always late to meetings. Whoa, that's a huge generality, right? Always. No one's always. So you get a sense of, well, don't do these things. If we're giving a review, we want to hear it be more specific, more comprehensive, if you will. So what you want to do is during planning meetings, I actively listen to my coworkers without disruption and when appropriate, share my position respectfully. So you see the change here? It's got a positive tone to it. It's much more specific and much more clear. If you look at Jessica's example, last quarter, Jessica exceeded her projected sales by 18%. So the person reading this is very clear. Oh, okay, I can see what's going on. Versus very good has left me wondering what's going on. So you want to be able to really clearly point out your successes and accomplishments. And notice with the second sentence here, it doesn't take very much. It still only is one sentence. And the third one here, Ron's always late to meetings. This time, you may want to make it a little more clear <clears throat> to maintain that positive aspect. If it's left to this, that always late, definitely is a tone of negativity there. So on this side, Ron has been late to four of the past five meetings. I can see what's going on. When Ron joins late, it causes the team to use valuable time to recap. Okay, so then what's your solution? I recommend Ron and I have a conversation to discuss how we can prioritize how we can prioritize attending meetings on time for next quarter. See that? So even though it has like Ron's not doing so great, it does have a positive outcome in the end. We're going to figure it out. And also as a as a recipient or as a reader, you go, okay, I can clearly see what's going on versus always late. 
What do you mean? So I have a measurable here. I know what's going on. It's much more clear. Are you following me? Okay, great. This is good. Now, it's your turn. Here's what we're going to have you do. Reporting clearly and effectively our final framework, how can you incorporate the three P's of progress to make your writing more effective? Could you incorporate this framework and negate the need for a meeting? Hmm. So rather than getting together for a team meeting to go over their progress, maybe you're able to just do some more applied business writing and get it done. What do you think? Also, what are two ways in which you can improve the reviews that you write? More specific, more positive, more comprehensive. What could you do? This could be performance reviews for your employees or self-assessment reviews. But take, take, take like five minutes here and answer these two questions for yourself. And the gift is when you leave here, you'll have this to go, hey, you know what? I can cut down some meetings now. Or I can write more effective reviews to get my points across much clearer and get recognized for my success and accomplishments. So take like five minutes just to answer these two questions. Pause me and I will be here when you get back, I promise. Okay, great. So if you do this exercise, what you have now is a reflection on, hey, you know what? Maybe if I apply the three Ps, I can find a way to cut down some of these progress report meetings. And just send an actually a more effective, clear and concise message. Yeah. Or you can make your reviews a bit more exciting, a bit more impactful, more engaging by following those frameworks as well. So coming out of this program, what are your actions to take? One, Try mind mapping or free writing or cubing if you ever experience writer's block. If you ever get stuck and you're not sure what to put down, try one of these techniques. Second, filter your thoughts and consider the audiences with them. What's in it for me? What's in it for them? So you're taking it down from everything you could say to only what you should say. Getting that takeaway is most relevant. Once you've got that, determine the best framework for your writing solution situation. Sorry. Make sense? So it could be daily communication, in which case then you're going to actually write fast and sound professional email and follow the five-step process. Or someone's going to simply scan your communications and now give them that bottom line up front and why. Here's what I want you to get and here's why. Or maybe you got to influence or persuade someone. So here you really got to focus on what's in it for them. And as you consider what's in it for them, you're thinking, hey, is it the time? That's going to impact them. Is it time? Is it is it the money or the impact of this? That's going to be the biggest influence. Or you're following that beginning, middle, and end flow where you share with them, here's a situation they can agree on. Here's the pain or the problem they're going to experience. And by following that, here's a solution they should follow to get through all of this. You follow that nice framework and they'll logically follow your solution at the end. Third is this progress reporting. So with progress reporting, you're simply going to three P's of progress reporting. And finally, writing a review that engages. As you follow any one of these frameworks, it's definitely going to enhance your business writing. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. If you want more from us, please check us out on Offsite. We have offer a lot of courses that can really help you grow as a professional from speaking to be heard, critical thinking, to emotional intelligence, even just business writing, as you saw today. Please check us out there for more information. With that... Thank you. It's been an honor and a privilege. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. All the best until then.